The Baltimore Ravens and Kansas City Chiefs face off tomorrow to open up the 2024 NFL season. And we talk about ways that the Ravens could have advantages over Kansas City and ways that Roquan Smith feels the Ravens can beat Kansas City. All that and more. Coming up next on this episode of Lockdown Ravens. You are Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of Locked On Ravens. We are your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. And as always, I'm your host, Kevin Ostraker of Ravens Wire. Coming to you from the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much, as always, for being here today, almost on game day, and making Locked On Ravens a part of your day and your first listen each and every day. Free and available for you, all podcasting platforms. That's video form on YouTube, audio form, wherever you get your shows. In that five days a week Ravens content, we have Monday through Friday, plus bonus episodes. We go live after every single Ravens game, which we will be doing after tomorrow's game as well as other bonus content as well and crossover Thursdays to start the season which we'll be getting into tomorrow with Locked On Chiefs. Today's episode of Locked On Ravens is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Here with me is more Baltimore Ravens wide receiver and Super Bowl champion Kadri Ismael and Q, you're a Super Bowl champion. You know what it takes to be a Super Bowl champion. This Ravens team in 2024 begins what hopefully will be a Super Bowl-esque journey for them, obviously with the disappointment of 2023 behind them. 2024 is a whole new season, and that journey starts tomorrow. It absolutely does. I think if we look back on the Ravens history, yes, the 2000 team won a world championship, and the 99 squad finished above 500, or at 500, I should say, so because of that, it was a momentous, is that such a word? Momentous. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> for the team to, to, to piggyback off of that success and ride it into the next year. I think what we saw in the 2012 team was similar. I'm hoping this year is very much similar too. When you look at this Ravens ball club last year, number one seed, AFC championship hosted a home game, had the first round by, all those things, checked off all the boxes. I'm looking at this as an opportunity to grow upon what we saw last year and Lamar Jackson and company to be hoisting up the Lombardi down New Orleans for a third time in franchise history. Yeah, that, that's the goal. And before we get into our content of potential advantages the Ravens have, against Kansas City and Roquan Smith's thoughts on that whole ordeal. I do want to ask you because it's been a big topic of conversation this week. I believe you and I have talked about it before, but maybe just so in passing. But this whole revenge notion that the Ravens can get revenge on Kansas City with a win in week one after what happened in the AFC championship game. Are you buying into that or would your revenge be in the playoffs or is there just no revenge at all because 2023 has already happened and it's gone? Let's let's be real. We recognize that there is something there. Um, what, what's the something there? It's the Pittsburghs. It's the Tennessees. Uh, it, back in my day, it's the Jacksonvilles and the Tennessees of the world. It, it's it's the New Englands of the world. When you have good football teams that you have to face you know, year in and year out for AFC supremacy, it takes on a life of its own. In this particular case, yeah, the playoffs was where you had two juggernauts going at it. And unfortunately for the Ravens, they came up short. But again, here it comes all over again. You know you're going to get the best out of Andy Reid's team. You know you're going to get the best out of John Harbaugh's team. So yeah, like, Let's 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 call it what it is. It's not a revenge game, but it's some damn good football. And two teams know that they got to play their best because the other is going to play their best as well. And that's exactly what it is, because to me, I would be shocked if there were no emotions. Like, I know the Ravens have said all the right things. They've they've obviously put it out to look. It's a new season, new season. And they're right, because to me, look, 2023 is gone. You can't get that back. If They win the Super Bowl. It's like, oh, they maybe could have gone back to back. But this is the team that you have circled. This is the team that you have to understand, the Ravens do, and you and I do as well, that you have to get over that hump. 
that's the team you got to beat in order to get to where you want to go. And Roquan Smith said it. He said the Chiefs are in the way of what they're trying to do this season. Off to a potentially great start. The Chiefs are in the way of that. Now, Roquan Q had some, I guess, interesting comments, at least were taken interestingly by Kansas City, in terms of how to beat this team. Now, Roquan ended up saying, make them one-dimensional, stop the run, right? Go make them one-dimensional that way. And that was obviously taken by Kansas City fans as, oh, so you're just going to leave the ball in Patrick Mahomes' hand and you're going to make the pass when Mahomes and Kelsey and all these new weapons that Mahomes has? That's not exactly what I got out of those comments, and I want to ask you what you got out of them because I know we've been saying this to each other for years. It's If you can take an element away from an offense, whether it's the run or the pass, and you can make an offense one-dimensional – it allows you to worry about one less thing as a defense. The offense doesn't have another thing up their sleeve, and it takes away part of their game plan. And it allows, in this particular instance, if you take away Kansas City's run game, your defensive lineman can be in pure rush mode instead of having to kind of go back and forth. I mean, did you take this as, a oh, we're going to let Mahomes pass, or did you take this as, a we, we want to dial them down as much as possible? I think for what Roquan is saying, it's simple. It's we know that, yeah, you make any team one dimensional, you take away something, it pigeonholes that team, it limits what they can do, the effectiveness. Look at last year's AFC championship game. You only rushed the ball a handful of times. You took away a strong element for the Ravens and it played right into Kansas City's hands. What do, you, what do you want me to say? You want me to be like, oh, my God, Roquan. Why? It's Patrick Mahomes. We're scared of him. What do we do? Oh, God, don't even go out there and play against them. Like, that's number 87. <laughs> oh, my God, that's Taylor Swift's boyfriend. Wow. Oh, no. I miss me with all that. This is football. And I'm sure Zach Orr is sitting there like, yo, I got a squad that's going to be aggressive and do the game plan we're calling for, and we're going to make plays. And if they get the better of us, okay, that's football. But I promise you they're going to be competing. So your guy, Roquan, ages zero, talked the talk. He was like, yo, this is what's up. I have no problem whatsoever. What Roquan Smith said, and I like it. I just – think that sometimes fans, they try to look at something and and make it more of what it is, but that's not bulletin board material. No, it's it's not. And I think that if you want to look for bulletin board material, the Chiefs certainly gave the Ravens plenty of that, whether it's what happened pregame in the AFC Championship with Justin Tucker, Fashion Mahomes, and Travis Kelsey, or Donovan Smith, you know, kind of trash talking Roquan after the game. There are plenty of examples there, but I think that Roquan was just saying that, hey, if you can take an element of a good offense away, and Kansas City has a heck of an offense, if you can take an element of that away, it doesn't allow them to reach. You can, you, They're going to reach into their bag of tricks, but you can't reach as far down if you take away an element of whatever they have. But also, you know, when you talk about the other side of the ball, defensively, Roquan, you know, the Ravens have an advantage there with a lot of their stars. The Chiefs certainly have theirs as well. But – the Chiefs did lose to Jerry Sneed, and we know that he was a big part of what the Chiefs did on defense last season, obviously was the one who punched the ball out from Zay Flowers as he reached towards the goal line, and they're rolling with a bunch of younger players in their secondary. Trent McDuffie, very established, former first-round pick. He and Zay Flowers are likely going to be seeing a lot of each other on Thursday night. That's a matchup I'm looking at watching there, but outside of guys like Justin Reed, who's a veteran safety, that is a very young defensive back group going up against Flowers, Rashad Bateman. But then you also have maybe the linebackers like Drew Tranquil and others, Leo Chanel and Nick Bolton. Those are going to be guys who are covering players like Mark Andrews, players like Isaiah Likely. How do you see these Baltimore pass catchers being able to fare against what is a younger secondary in Kansas City that still has stars but lost a pretty big veteran one on Jerry Sneak? One of the things with Snead was, yes, his veteran savvy, of course, you know, being able to poke a young Zay Flowers uh, and then at the same time caused him to, you know, have the critical turnover. And that really just took, you know, pretty much the life out of what we thought was going to be a secure victory for the Ravens, or at least a comeback to get into the game to 
you know, put the game away. That being said, I think actually it is a flipping of the script. And you'll say, well, what does that mean? Well, it's imperative on them to make sure their communication is on point because when the Ravens are on offense, I've played in Kansas City. I mean, that place is incredibly loud. It is unreal. Like you are just like, it's deafening. And so with that deafening crowd, like you're looking around and you're seeing route combinations, it can work against you. And I think for the defense for Kansas City, let that offensive line for the Ravens protect Lamar and watch him feast. Go ahead <laughs> and let Big King Henry, who has done tremendous work against the Kansas City Chiefs when he was with the Titans, let him get into that second level. We're about to see some things. And I think that's where you know their youth might come against them. Yeah, and I'm not saying that Kansas City's youth is just all these bad players that are like these guys who aren't – right, we're, both of us aren't saying that. You know, guys like Joshua Williams, Jalen Watson, et cetera, those yeah. guys are – they're good players. But it's kind of like what the Ravens are going through at a bunch of other positions where Kansas City believes in their young cornerbacks. Well, the Ravens believe in their young offensive line. The Ravens believe in their young pass rushers. The Ravens believe in – you know, we can go on and on and on about that. It's this, It's a similar – not the same, but a similar situation. So you lose a vet who is really good in Legereus Need. You're hoping the younger guys can step up and perform to that level. Both Kansas City and Baltimore are relying on youth in certain spots. But coming up to the second part of the show, we're going to be talking about more keys to watch versus Kansas City. Obviously, Baltimore's offensive line's a big question mark, and we can talk a little bit about Derrick Henry, too, how he runs behind that line. Stay tuned. Plan to talk about on Lockdown Ravens. First, the show is brought to you by FanDuel. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book, and I love going on FanDuel and looking at all the things they have to offer over there. We have something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base fan, will be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon on a market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel any time. So for Ravens and Chiefs, the Ravens opened up with two and a half point air dogs in that game. They are now three point underdog. So if you like that line, head over to FanDuel. Let's visit FanDuel.com. Download America's number one sports book. We are back. Our second segment, Locked on Ravens. Kevin Ostriker and Kadri Ismail still here with you on this Wednesday edition. Man, it is crazy. The Ravens open up their season tomorrow against the Kansas City Chiefs. Q, it, it feels kind of surreal that we're here. It's, it's, you know, it hits me in waves that it's that it's game week. It's like, man, because it doesn't feel like it's the Thursday night game. So you're like, man, and I know, I know you're celebrating yourself because you have endured the off season. And I want to say to you, congratulations. We have actually made it to the regular season, and you have officially passed through that time where you had to go all all the speculation, all the rumors, all the who's what's going to happen. No, we know, and I know you know. Regular season is go time. I know it's what you live for. It's interesting because my son, he's on a practice squad. So therefore, I've seen more of the training camp lead up into the season than ever before. And I will say this, the the question marks, the uh, speculation, uh, the salary cap, the, the contracts and all that, that is just more guessing what I appreciate about this. This is the concrete. Here's what we are about to see. I'm going to see a Lamar Jackson who is sprinting by dudes in training camp show out. I'm going to see a guy who went to the combines, blew out his knee. Oh, my God. Strategically, you get him drafted okay, or picked up at least and works his butt off. He put himself in a prime opportunity to start now. You look at a, a, a veteran left tackle who is, when he is at his best and healthiest, he's the best left tackle in football. We saw it. Well, he just came off of a scenario where he went through the entire offseason and looked awesome. Like, this is it. This is we, We're going to see it. I'm, I'm, I'm curious because man-to-man, -man, we saw a ton of man-to-man coverage with Kyle Hamilton on a slew of the tight ends, some receivers and all that. Well, why? Because we saw last year when he was going up against Travis Kelsey and how that looked. So this is an opportunity in so many ways to see all these different pieces come together and, and really compete. 
there's just like, you know, I, I'm, I'm anxious to see the after game portion of it all, or at least talk about it because yeah, it's going to, now we can start to, to like sink our teeth into what this team is really about. Yeah. And I think to me, a really big part of it is, you know, these guys being able to continue their training camp momentum into the regular season. And again, it's, it's a long season. It's a grueling season. I know, I know, you know, as well as anybody Q, how taxing it can be to go out there for all those games and put your body on the line. And the Ravens, while they were healthy in terms of season ending IR last season, where they didn't have a ton of guys actually hit season ending IR that were contributors, they had a lot of guys that missed a month here and a month and a half there and another three weeks here, and another month there. And that was a little bit of a, a trend for them. So you're hoping that they can stay as healthy as possible. And you mentioned the cap. Well, speaking of, the Ravens did clear up some cap space over the past couple of days. Officially, $9.26 million. They converted $4.875 of Namdi Matabike, who, again, Justin Matabike now going by Namdi Matabike. His salary, that is another $4.875 of Roquan Smith's salary and $2.29 of Justin Tucker's salary into signing bonuses. So shout out to Spotrack for those numbers. So the Ravens will not enter week one with about $4.8 million in cap space, but Q, I know you're not here to talk about cap space. You're here to talk about the game. And uh, look, this Ravens team, the biggest concern point, you mentioned Ronnie Stanley, but it is that offensive line. It's the offensive line losing 60% of their starters, putting a lot of youth into big starting spots this year. Unofficial depth chart has it as Andrew Voorhees, Daniel Falele, and Patrick McCary as the starters right now alongside Linderbaum and Ronnie Stanley. What's your confidence level going into this game? Because it is a heck of a test for this line especially with guys like Chris Jones, George Karloftis, and others ready to, to pounce on running lanes and especially getting to Lamar Jackson? You know, I, I think looking at it, it's going to be a challenge. We know Chris Jones, what he brings to the table. We know they have a formidable defensive front. Spagnuolo, he is as good as it gets when it comes to, you know, just where he likes to bring pressure, the timing of it all. And I think the communication is going to be – Critical. Um, no offsides. Really dialing in on what you feel your assignment needs to be. Uh, running the ball, getting some level of an open lane. You know, those are things that I'm looking at when it comes down to it. What is it come down to? It comes down to the fact that can you get Derrick Henry uh, into a position where he's getting big chunks of yards and it forces you to, you know, get some uh, eighth guy in the box and you get one-on-one -on, -one on the outside or you're going to go ahead and now you're looking at, uh, you know, a one-on-one -on -one isolation, whether it be likely or Andrews. And, and, and all of that works in the offensive line's favor. It starts and ends with them having an opportunity to allow for uh, Derrick Henry to get creases and make big plays. And speaking of that, and it's – Look, it's a, it's a top of a conversation that not a lot of people want to talk about still, but the Chiefs' run defense was not good last season. They were not good in the regular season. They were not good in the playoffs. They were 24th in the league in yards per attempt last year, and in the playoffs, obviously, we know that story. Buffalo in that divisional round game averaged 4.7 yards per carry on 39 attempts. The Ravens did not take advantage of that. Obviously, game flow dictates, Q. It's going to be a big situational thing. Now, situationally in the AFC Championship, the Ravens did not get the job done, and I think read a lot of those situations wrong. But this time around, with Derrick Henry in your backfield, as you were just talking about earlier, do you expect the Ravens to have a run-heavy game plan, considering that even with the young corners, Kansas City secondary is still solid? Do you expect the Ravens to attack the Chiefs on the ground with Derrick Henry, or do you expect them to try to be a more balanced unit this year? What I think we on the outside look so much at run, 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 because they did it. But I think it's their lack of executing and getting rid of the football from where the pressure was coming from. So in other words, yeah, you could be effective running the ball, but if they're still bringing pressure on downs where you think you can make a big play and you don't pick up that pressure, now you get sacked. Now you're in third and long. So how good or effective that's going to be for you if you had a big, you know, run play, uh, you know, in, in the early downs and now you're on your fifth or sixth, you know, uh, play of the drive to sustain. Yeah, you're going to have to pass the ball. 
But I think the big point in all of this, when you have pressure, the receiver's got to make plays for Lamar, and Lamar has to be smart getting rid of the football so that strong run after catch does happen. I think that's where the advantage lies for what the Baltimore Ravens are needing to do. Yeah, and again, if you can establish the run, I think a really big point this season, Q, is with the Ravens' heavy personnel, two tight end looks. You can throw a patch of a card out there and heavy personnel groupings as well. You can work play action off of that. It's what made that 2019 team so successful when they ran those three tight end sets with, you know, Hayden Hurst in there, Nick Boyle, Mark Andrews. They could run play action off of that, and teams did not have the personnel to keep up with all those guys. And with Derrick Henry in that backfield, too, it's going to be interesting. So when you talk about Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely, I I mentioned earlier that guys like Nick Bolton, Leo Chanel, and and others, Drew Tranquil, are going to be up to the task of covering those guys. How do you feel like the Ravens will introduce us to the what hopefully will be the the common personnel grouping of those two on the field at the same time together? Yeah, you know, it, it, it has to be where are you going to put in like a big nickel? In other words, you have the personnel to bring in kind of a safety and, and hope that he can cover. Um, I know that that's what ultimately uh, you have a, a depth at tight end. I know that's what <clears throat> Travis Kelsey does when – you know, is it a safety? Okay, cool. We're just going to go ahead and run the ball. Uh, we'll get it to an outside guy. Um, you're 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 at a disadvantage. Oh, great, cool. You got a linebacker. Ha ha, sucker. I'm about to go ahead and abuse you, a la Travis Kelsey. So same thing. Now you got two guys. You got a uh, likely. You got an Andrews. You go ahead and you know try to to bring in pressure. I think that's where their ability to create space and create um, mismatches is, is, is what Todd Munkin uh, is hoping for, looking for, and then it's up to Lamar to be accurate with the football. Yeah, that's the big part here. Lamar is going to have to make a statement in this opening game, but we do know that he can make a statement without all of the gaudy stats. He can go 15 of 20 for 185 passing yards, and the Ravens can still win by 25 points. So Lamar's going to have to make a statement here. Coming up, though, we're going to be making our statements. We're going bold predictions in the final segment here of Locked on Ravens. So we'll talk about what we think potentially could happen, even if not so likely. So be sure to stay tuned. We'll talk about that next here on Locked on Ravens. First, the show was brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The Formula for winning championships is also what keeps Ride or Die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, results gets LED headlights, and more. Whether they're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has it covered. With over 120 million parts for and on more Ride or Die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay getting you fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. It's the eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. The parts you need the prices you want. It's easy to make a car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep Ride or Die alive at eBayMotors.com. Ellis Williams, only exclusive to buy EV guarantee for only available to U.S. customers. We're back here, our final segment, Locked On Ravens. Kevin Ostriker still here with Kadri Ismail here on this Wednesday. Again, appreciate everybody for tuning into Locked On Ravens today, making us your first listen each and every day. Be sure to subscribe, follow along, video form and audio form. We are in season. It is exciting. We're going to go live after the Ravens game tomorrow. Have a crossover Thursday episode tomorrow as well with Locked On Chiefs kind of diving behind enemy lines. So if you have a friend or a family member that is a Ravens fan, wants to hear the Ravens coverage, be sure to send them over our way on Locked On Ravens. Now, Q, this is the fun part of the show where, again, these predictions, I want to preface it that depending on how bold we get, the likelihood of them happening, right, that's going to shift. So I don't know how bold I'm going to get. I'm still debating which ones I want to throw out here. Q, do you have any? Do you want me to go first? Bold prediction as far as the year or the game? But let's let's do year. It can be player. It can be team. What, what do, you, do you have anything? Bold prediction, Travis Jones going to be first team all pro. Woo. That will have six sacks in the interior. Bold prediction, Zach Orr's defense will be top five against the run. Bold prediction, his defense will be uh, number eight in scoring defense. Bold prediction, uh... We'll have a kickoff return for a touchdown because some team is going to be dumb enough to throw it, and we're going to be awesome enough to block it up and take one to the house. 
and we're going to dedicate it to Jacoby Jones. Uh, bold prediction. I think Lamar Jackson has four 300-yard-plus passing games. Um, bold prediction. Lamar Jackson has over 100 yards rushing, 250 yards passing, and uh, a five-TD performance against uh, NFC. No, an AFC North opponent. Oh, bold prediction. We're going to just straight mud stomp the Dallas Cowboys down in Cowboy land. Whoop, whoop. There's my bold predictions. <laughs> Say something. Let's go. Those, that's awesome. We're, I love it, man. We're getting bold, bold here. I don't, I don't know. If, all right. So since you went so bold, I'm going to have to also get so bold because I, I can't, I can't just leave you out, man. I got, I got to, I got to go with you here. So I'll start small and then I'll go, I'll lead up. I'll lead up to where I'm, to where I'm really going. One of my bull predictions is that Isaiah likely will have more touchdowns than Mark Andrews this year. I think that they're going to use him a lot. And I think that, again, it's probably going to be close. But, again, it doesn't matter if they're close. If, if likely has one more touchdown, I hit on that bull prediction. So I think that likely is going to have a big year. Not that Mark Andrews won't, but I think they're really going to lean into him this season. Bull prediction. I think that David Ajabo will have double-digit sacks. That's somebody that I, I think that if he can put it all together, right? I think everybody's talking about Lafayette Owe. I think I did this a couple of years ago. I had said that uh, everybody was talking about, I can't remember which pass rusher it was, but I had said Tyus Bowser would have double-digit sacks. Didn't end up happening, but it was fun to talk about on the show. But I'm saying David Ajabo over at Lafayette Owe for, for sacks this year, double-digit-wise. Another bull prediction, I think Brandon Stevens leads the Ravens in interceptions this year. In a contract year, I think he cashes out. And look, if, if last year was any indication, I think that he's going to be a baller and earn a heck of a contract in for agency. Bull prediction, Rashad Bateman over 1,000 yards this year. That's 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 oh. a big one. That's that's a big one. I know, hey, man, I know you're – Bold is bold, right? That's, that's bull bold. Hey, if, if we're go if we're saying bull predictions, we gotta go, we gotta go bull predict. We're not doing any, well, Lamar Jackson might have 15 touchdowns. No, we're going, we're going, we're going bold predictions. And hey, you know what? Rashad has the talent to do it. Just a matter of him staying healthy. Well, now if I'm saying that Lamar has uh what did I say, three games over 300 yards plus, then that absolutely goes into your bold prediction of saying that. Um, Bateman is going to have over a thousand receiving yards. Yeah, look at that. We're just we're interweaving our our timelines. We're interweaving the timelines of, of Ravens there. And then I think another bull prediction, and I don't think this is one people are going to want to hear, but the Ravens get the one seed again in the AFC. I feel like you. There's a lot of conversation. I know, I know for a fact you and I have had this conversation before about. One seed versus wild card underdogs versus getting the one seed. You want to buy a lot of teams do every single time. Like you take that 10 times out of 10. You say, all right, we, we get the rest for a week. And you know, I think it'd be a different conversation if the Ravens had lost to Houston, but they didn't. They beat down Houston. They look good beating down Houston. So maybe it's less of a contention point now. But I guess another bull prediction for me is that the Ravens will get the one seed. So I think we each threw out five. Maybe you had six. I can't remember. But I guess, I guess okay, I'll, I'll go one more. I think that the Ravens have uh, – this, this is so crazy, but I'm going to say it. Three Pro Bowl offensive linemen this year. Woo! That's the bold – or offensive linemen? Offensive. That's that's the that's the boldest of the bold. I mean, that's, I, I, that's hella bold. If that, you know what? But see, if that is the case, then that means they absolutely have locked up the number one seed. Um, if, yeah, absolutely. And I'll tell I'll tell you who Linderbaum, Stanley Voorhees is uh, is who I would go with there. I, I'm I'm would be the big Voorhees guy. Is there is there anybody you would choose over those three? I, if there I, were, I would say Linderbaum, Stanley, and. Uh, I'm going to say Rosengarden. Rosengarden. All right. So, yeah, I mean, look, again, if we're, I told you we were going up in scale on the bull predictions until yeah. we got to the biggest one, and, and that was my big one. So, hey, you know what? I have another bull prediction and say that um, – so if Zach Orr's defense is doing well, my bold prediction is 
Roquan Smith will be in the conversation for Defensive Player of the Year. That, that's, I like, I Kyle like that. Hamilton will certainly be in the conversation as well, and it will harken back to the days of Ray Lewis and Ed Reed. Oh, I like, hey, I like the sound of that. I like the sound of that. So, look, man, these bold predictions, some of them more likely than others. I know, Q, we're both not sitting here and saying, oh, this is 100% going to happen. They're bold predictions for a reason, right? But uh, they're smart bold predictions. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> we're, like not, we're not, we're not, we're not just throwing, okay, Lamar Jackson's no. going to have 50 passing touchdowns this season, right? We're not, we're not doing any of that. But some are more likely than others. Others, maybe not so likely, but at least you can make an argument. And again, some more convincing than others for those bowl predictions. But it's fun. It's fun to just throw out some bowl predictions and see which one hits, which one don't. So, Q, we're going to go back after the season ends, and we're going to we're going to take a look at this. We're going to be gonna, looking back on this. Yeah, we're going to see. We're going to see how many we hit on. We're going to see. I would say if I get two right, I'll be happy because I know I'm obviously not all mine are realistic. But well, I know Travis Jones. I know the Zach Orr one. I know that uh, the Lamar one, which coincides with your Bateman one. Uh, Shoot, those are some good ones. We got yeah. we got good ones. I know you're a Dafe Owe one. Uh that's gonna be another good one as well. I'm I'm going to Jabo. I'm going to Jabo over Owe. Oh my apologies. Oh you're all right. No, you're good. You Although I do good. think Owe almost gets there. I think okay. Owe almost gets there. Okay, I got you. Well, my bold prediction is we're gonna have a a a bookend double sack uh team since they led it last year with an amalgam of guys. Every time they're going to be pointing out number 14 and when number 10 comes back, everybody's going to be so keyed on both of those dudes, 99 and 90, going to be like, ah, this is how we do it for the motherland. And they're going to be just coming off the edge, sacking dudes. And you know what? Throw some Kyle Van Noy in there and you got a really nice, solid pass rushing rotation. But obviously, as we've talked about all off season heading into this year, their youth is going to have to carry them obviously alongside their stars. We, we can do a couple for the game though, Q, if, if you want to, if you have any for the, for the week one game, do you have anything on your mind that, uh, yeah, a bold you prediction. Think could happen? Um, Rashad Bateman is, is going to show out, um, bold prediction. He has nine catches, uh, for one twenty seven. um, mm. bold prediction. Uh, Chris Jones is held sackless. And Ronnie Stanley abuses uh, him. I think bold prediction. We already kind of see this is not a bold prediction. If I say something Derrick Henry wise, so miss me with that. Bold prediction. You're going to see um, Justice Hill come out of the backfield and catch uh, four passes for 70 yards. That's bold. Yeah. That means we're controlling the ball. We're whooping up on them. And he's going to catch a, a critical touchdown. Um. Bowl prediction defense. Patrick Mahomes uh, tosses three interceptions, uh, mm. two to Marlon, and one to uh, Marcus Williams. As much as I was critical of Marcus last year, okay, Marcus comes back and, and shows his worth. Yeah. I like him. Actually, I, I have a Marlon one. I think we're going to get my bold prediction, at least one of them. Marlon gets a signature fruit punch out on the newest, oldest Kansas City Chiefs receiver in Juju Smith-Schuster, kind of reminiscing back to those Raven Steelers days when Marlon punched that ball out of Juju's hands to set up, remember that Duck Hodges game in 2020? So reminiscent of that, I think that because Marlon his we haven't really seen a bunch of that over the course of the last couple of seasons with Marlon. Yeah. So getting back to that, I think that bull prediction, Nelson Aguilar catches two touchdowns. So I'm going to go Nelson, big, oh, big Nelson Aguilar. Bowl, but wow. Yeah, Nelson Aguilar. I am going to go Trenton Simpson beats Roquan Smith in tackles. That, that's another bold one. I think, both, again, one, yeah. two, right? One, two. Trent Simpson, Roquan class Smith on that box score going to be one, two. But again, one, not the shot. BK leads uh, the team in tackles for loss. Uh, I don't know what the record would be, but I'll say he has, you know, six tackles for loss, and that just really confounds and confuses and befuddles the juggernaut offense that's the Kansas City Chiefs. 
And I'll, I'll go one more. Justin Tucker hits a 50-plus yard field goal and stares at Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. I'll do you one better, and I'll say Butker, he misses two critical ones as uh, he tries to go toe-to-toe with the real GOAT. I'll give my official prediction tomorrow on the Crossover Thursday episode on QU, and I usually did these on Thursdays last year, so we both gave our predictions. Do you have a score? Do you? Do you? Who are you picking? Who you got winning? I'm going to say it's Ravens 35-30. My initial prediction, I think it'll be a little lower scoring than you, but I'm going to go and I'll, I'll I'll do more thinking about it tonight. But right off the top of my head, I'm going 23-20 Ravens in Arrowhead. They get the job done and uh, no revenge, but they at least get a really strong start to the season. Q, appreciate you as always. Thanks so much for, for hopping on, joining me, talking Ravens football. Crazy that we got a game tomorrow. Absolutely unbelievable. Tell people where they can find you and what you're working on. Yeah, man. Missiletraining.com. Missiletraining.com is where you can find me, talk to me, communicate, break it all down. Human and sports movement is where it's at. We love getting in there from age range six all the way up to 85. If you're a sports performance, you're trying to improve your game, come see me. If you just want human movement, aid and help, Come see me. We'll work through it. We'll make sure that you are on point for the longevity of your life. At the same time, you can also find me on Sundays on WJZ Channel 13. I am on Purple Pregame. We'll be breaking down all the Ravens games. The Ravens schedule is all over the place. So we'll be looking back on games, looking forward to games. It'll be awesome. Check me out there and Locked On Ravens. Kevin Allstriker and I right here every single week, giving you what you need. That's that good Raven content. Absolutely. So again, links to Q's work all in the description down below. Check out what he has to offer. It is really incredible stuff. And be sure to tune in to everything that he is working on this season. Q, again, appreciate you as always. Appreciate everybody for tuning in to Lock on Ravens today. Coming up tomorrow, we will have our game day episode. We talk in with Locked on Chiefs for crossover Thursday. So getting an insight into Kansas City as the Ravens will be having, hopefully, a win in Kansas City. Stay tuned for that. Be sure to like and subscribe. Video form, audio form. We'll see you right back here tomorrow on Locked on Ravens.